gonna be a tandem flash monkey. Just came off of my trip from Arkansas, which it worked really, really well. First step to this fly is actually really important, whether you're doing the single one or the double one, and that's to get a nice base layer of something to support your material that you're gonna rest on. In this case, it's gonna be buck hair, buck tail. base back here for material to rest. going to support material on that. So for our tail we're going to actually make a flash tail fly. It's kind of the concept of this fly in general. And it really any flash of blue that you guys have. It could be pearl, green, brown, whatever it is. Just whatever flash that's on that racket Ryan's. There's a billion of them. Feel free and tamper with it. do if you want you can put feathers in there you can do a feather accent I'll do one of each and you just kind of pair up a few feathers you don't need much four of them or so buck hair on this at this point. Basically what this really is is almost a deceiver at the rear end. fly tires do this move. Oh. Silly Hansons. Go, go like that and then uh, you know, take our little... You know, like that. Yeah, it's all cured. <laughs> got your little light there? Yeah, did you like that? Got your light? Yeah, you like that? Yeah, I did. Love it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to 
put some bee chain eyes on this thing on the front of the hook and I like to put it on first because that's kind of my point of reference. Take a few beads for a spacer on these. Depending upon the size of the fly. Because really with these the modern hooks now, you're gonna need some form of spacer. They're all shorter, they're wider gaps, they're a lot stronger hooks, but they're not as long. The shanks aren't as long. So in order to keep it fishing, you wanna make sure you space that hook out. Cause if I just tied this sucker in right there, there's not much there. When a fish grabs it, might as well just have one hook on it. You know, make sure you have the, these adequately spaced so you can actually catch a fish. Cause that's what these flies are for, for fishing. They're not arts and crafts. You kind of place out where you want your hook. I usually use three on this size fly. helps to use lighter colored thread when doing these flies because I don't want to add the bulk of having a bunch of buck hair on there. I want this fly to cast like a missile. <clears throat> Just coming off the white where you have to make some big casts, I mean 60, 80 footers, you want a fly that's going to cast and that's somewhat light that still holds a profile and moves well. And keeping the buck tail amount down is, is pretty critical. But usually I'll kind of give myself a little bit of gap here, kind of for me to know where to start my bucktail. So what I'll do is keep my eyelet just off there. Some little trick to this fly here. So you know where to wrap my, you can put a brush on there. But right here, I'll go about halfway. And, and you're not gonna, this is not gonna pull out. You're gonna pull the Queen Mary with this thing. Good thing with bucktail is, in a frustrating part, is that some of it's not very good. So if you really, really want to just use premium flat style down flat wing stuff, do this and then throw this away or save it for guys at reverse tie because this is all you got. What you want is the flattest and non-hollow stuff. But all your musky guys and stuff, this stuff is good stuff. And that's really hollow, it's gonna flare big, it's gonna be great for reverse tying. But for flat wing stuff, that's what you got. This is the tip. Take a good chunk of peacock curl. biggest rule here is whatever you think too much is, go a little more than that. If you think it's way too much, a little bit more. The trick when doing this buck here is don't make it go too far, or this uh, peacock, don't make it go too far back because it'll tangle your fly when you're fishing. And I'll take some olive, but I'm, like I said, I'm like Matt suggested, I'm only working with this top part. To this other bottom stuff just gets in the way. So if you're, if you're that serious about doing flat wings, <laughs> that's what you got. What I'm going to do here is what kind of separates this fly apart is the brushes. And the brush, there's tons of them available. This is a three inch chromatic brush. The Senyo makes it, hairline carries it. This adds, is going to add a lot of stiffness to the front of this. And it's going to be pretty easy. There's no trimming, there's no none of that business. These brushes have really made a big difference in fly time, actually. 
because it still pushes water. It's still going to create some hydraulic. It's still going to make that fly bend on a 90 when you stall it. Still going to hover there. It's a neutrally buoyant fly with the eyes and the two hooks. So there is a little bit of weight, which adds to the castability of the fly. You gotta have weight on the fly to make it castable. If you don't have weight from, to, if you don't have counteracting weight, it's not gonna cast very well. There's a wire in there, so just don't do that. nice variant of this fly is to do uh, depending upon how you want to fish this fly if I want to fish this on the strip with a pause I'm gonna add more brush if I'm gonna fish it with a two-handed burn where I'm really moving that fly like crazy I'm gonna down the brush a little bit um, this one will kind of be in between in terms of it's more of a universal tie but it, usually I pack the brush on if I want it to really move 